Cool. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Wesley. This is Wu Can Cook. Uh, today we're doing a chicken pad thai. Actually, we're going to do it with a little bit of tofu today because we have tofu to use. Uh, but if you have any questions for me, feel free and drop your questions in the chat. The original recipe that we did for this particular chicken pad thai, uh, I believe it did use chicken, I think. It was a long time ago. I think it was over like a year ago on the YouTube channel. So. Uh, if you're looking for those recipes, they always live over on my YouTube channel. So if you're watching on YouTube, that's the channel that you're on already. Uh, if you're watching on Reddit, that's the channel uh, that's at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we've got new recipes that are coming out over there uh, every Friday. So uh, many, many Fridays ago. I think it was like I mean, maybe September of 2020 or so, like a year ago at least. Uh, there was a pad thai recipe that I came out with that I put out uh, over on that channel a long time ago. Uh, and it's been one of my favorite noodle dishes to do, I think. Uh, it, essentially, if you are not familiar with pad thai, I would be really surprised if you're not familiar with pad thai because it's a very, very popular Thai dish uh, here in the States. Uh, but it relies, if you're not familiar, very heavily on the use of tamarind paste. Uh, today we're going to be using uh, pad thai sauce, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what the heck pad thai sauce is because that's a weird amalgamation of a bunch of random stuff that they throw into what is essentially tamarind paste plus sugar. Uh, which is not my favorite thing, but uh, I've been having a really hard time finding tamarind paste, so here we are. Uh, so if you have any questions, feel free to drop those in the chat. Uh, if you're looking for the recipe that's over on YouTube, and if you haven't yet, definitely uh, go over to the YouTube channel and subscribe over there too. It's a fun stuff coming out every Friday. Uh, Atlas, yeah, good to be good to see you again. Hello. Uh, we also took a week off last week, so uh, it's good to be back too. It's lots of fun. Uh, back and cooking dinner again. So. Also spend a week not cooking dinner, so that was fun. Uh, so, uh, as with a lot of our noodle dishes, this is tr pretty much true for definitely all of the Chinese stuff that we do. Also true for most of like uh, like the Korean and most of the probably most of the Thai stuff that we do too. Uh, I'm starting off by crushing the mincing that was four cloves of garlic, pre-peeled garlic, because I have a bunch of leftover pre-peeled garlic today. Uh, and this is going to be about an inch or about a tablespoon of uh, fresh ginger. So. Um, these two uh, these two ingredients, they tend to uh, be the very first two things that we do in a lot of dishes uh, that rely or use very heavily uh, elements of umami because ginger and garlic, they tend to uh, be like the really good, uh, two really good uh, starting points for umami when we're dealing with those flavors. So uh, It's not that we want everything to taste like garlic and ginger, it's more that uh, as we start like working on building blocks of umami, uh, these tend to be like good starting points. So as we start like layering things on top of it, uh, these are going to be the first things, first two things that go in our wok. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to essentially, essentially a pad thai sauce, uh, which is going to be a combination of a few things. Uh, mainly, we're, the first thing that we're going to use uh, is that pad thai sauce. So it's a pre-mix of uh, pad, uh, tamarind paste, uh, plus a couple of other things, uh, and then we're going to combine it with a couple of things. I think mainly. Uh, a bit of uh, fish sauce, which is, I think, in my opinion, maybe the most important thing that goes in this dish. Uh, maybe even more important than the tamarind paste, probably not. But uh, as far as I, I, in my opinion, I think fish sauce is probably the most important thing. Uh, and then what we're going to do is, so we're going to take these aromatics that we're chopping up right now, uh, and we're going to toss them into our wok fry really, really quickly. So about like for about 30 seconds. Uh, essentially, we're going to toss them just long enough until they become fragrant. Uh, and then we're going to pull them out and then add them to our sauce. So when we add them to the sauce, uh, essentially what it's doing is it's adding a whole bunch of aromatic flavor uh, to that sauce. So then we get all of these nice blooming aromatic qualities that are added to our sauce. Uh, and it have this really, really results in this really, really fragrant sauce base. Oh, you grew up watching Yan Can Cook? Yeah, me too, actually. That's what, uh, so that for the folks who are, are not familiar with the, the homage that the name of this channel is referring to. It's uh, referring to a, a PBS show run by a guy named Martin Yan. Uh, this was back in the 90s, so lots of 90s kids will probably know this. Uh, and as, uh, Martin Yan uh, had a show that's called Yan Can Cook, which is what Wu Can Cook is essentially uh, inspired by. Uh, and in that show, he would do he would basically cook a lot of like Chinese Chinese and Chinese American classics. Uh, and uh, I used to watch that show uh, like every day after school. Uh, because uh, it was, we only had basic cable for a really long time. PBS uh, in the Bay Area is part of basic cable, uh, so I used to watch that show a lot because it was the only thing that was on. Was they, that or I was watching? I'd have to watch like Barney, which is, I think is also on PBS actually. 
So, uh, <laughs> so uh, what we're doing right now, this, so these are Thai chilies that I'm diving into. Uh, I would also say uh, very, very important and very, very iconic flavor to Thai cooking. Uh, so anytime that you're eating something uh, in the Thai cuisine or any like a, of a Thai flavor, uh, and you notice that it's very, very spicy, uh, it's all coming from these Thai chilies. So uh, Thai food, if you've ever had an extremely spicy Thai dish, uh, it relies very, very heavily on the use of Thai chilies. It has a very specific form of uh, heat that's like very quintessential to uh, what Thai cooking tastes like. So if you are uh, trying to replicate that form of heat, it's coming from the Thai chilies and you can't really get it uh, without that Thai chili. So I've tried uh, many other times too. You can, uh, you can definitely can if you, particularly if you're not like a huge proponent of spicy stuff, you can absolutely sub it out. Uh, I think in the original recipe that I did, I uh, used a jalapeno, which is also fine. Jalapeno is a pretty standard, like uh, like a pretty basic heat form of heat. So you're not gonna like you're not gonna get a lot out of it, but you're also not gonna um, you're not gonna be mad about it either. So uh, so if you want, you can absolutely use a jalapeno, uh, but or you could also use like a serrano or a fresno or really any kind of chili that you've got. Uh, and you're gonna get some form of heat out of it and that's gonna do the trick for you but that really if you're trying to recreate that like iconic form of Thai heat uh, it's coming from the Thai chilies you gotta have the chilies all right so next up this is about a quarter of a red onion so uh, if we're trying to keep it authentic and it also probably would taste better uh, if you have a shallot I actually forgot to go buy a shallot today so today we're using red red onion uh, which is probably gonna be fine but again uh, just like with the Thai chilies, uh, anytime that you sub, you're moving far, farther and farther away from the original intention of what the dish is supposed to taste like. So, uh, what I always say is, I always, I'm a big proponent of substitutions, but uh, just keep in mind is every time that you sub something, uh, it gets you farther and farther away of what that actually, uh, the dish is actually supposed to taste like. So, uh, today I think it's actually going to be fine for a couple of reasons. Uh, I think substituting that, um, uh, substituting that shallot is going to be fine. Uh, for a couple of reasons, mainly is uh, where well, the number one thing is because the Thai uh, pad Thai sauce, that Thai pad Thai mix that we're using, uh, actually has shallot in it already. It has a couple of things in it, uh, but shallot is one of the big things that are already in it. So, uh, if we wanted, we could even leave that shallot out, which uh, I don't actually recommend. But, uh, but uh, we'll probably not. Which I always recommend. Uh, you can totally, uh, you can absolutely sub a shallot out for a little bit of an onion. I usually say a quarter of an onion per shallot. Yeah. Cool. Walk with the actually Walk with the Yam was a different different show, uh, which I didn't know. It, it, it's uh, uh, not actually run by Martin Yen. I had no idea. I always just assumed Walk with the Yam was another Martin Yen show. Uh, but Walk with the Yen is actually another another completely different PBS show from the same era of cooking, which I thought was a revelation for me when I discovered that. Okay, so what we're doing right now, I'm chopping up, this is some carrots, and we're going to do a julienne cut on it. So what uh, we're doing here, uh, so I just started out uh, by, first thing we did is slice these carrots in half, uh, and then we're going to do is go for a plank. So if we were stopping here, uh, you, uh, you would consider this a plank cut. Uh, which is essentially like boards of carrot. Uh, and what I'm going to do is, so I'm tilting it on its side until it's diagonal, uh, and then we're slicing downward from there. Uh, and that's going to give us our Julian cut. So uh, that is a, a shortcut that I actually recently discovered. Honestly results in probably the best uh, form of Julian cut that I've found uh, so far. Mostly because the Julian cut is really laborious, uh, and it takes a lot of just like time. It takes a lot of time to get the julienne cut, so uh, I found that this is a really great shortcut. Not thin enough, yeah. Uh, oftentimes, uh, I get lazy with my julienne cut. I'm not gonna lie, I very often will get lazy with my julienne cut. Uh, mostly because I don't care. <laughs> Uh, but if you're really committed, if you want a really fine julienne cut, you could also put it through a mandolin. Uh, some people say that's cheating. That might be cheating. I don't know. Also, sometimes I check out early and I'll just do planks because I just don't care. And it's a lot of work and I don't feel like cutting that much stuff. So.
So we're going for planks here. So if we stopped here, that would be a plank. And then we're tilting them on their side like so. Uh, and then slicing downward. And what's going to happen is since they're essentially still stacked on top of each other, you get these nice... Brilliant. Yeah. All right, one more time. Here's our planks. Uh, and then we're tilting on the side and going downward. Yeah. Also, by the way, if you were paying attention uh, and we're trying to recreate an authentic pad thai uh, carrots, they probably don't belong in the pad thai. Carrot, the uh, in, inclusion of a carrot in a pad thai is for sure part of an American invention. It does not. Uh, traditionally found in pad thai, but also in my experience, uh, pad thai is about the most American form of Thai food that you can get. Um, so if you're going to Americanize it, if you're going to Americanize Thai food, this is probably the one to do it with. So I don't mind uh, carrots in my Thai food, but to each their own. Uh, I believe the like a true traditional pad thai should only have probably like bean sprouts and maybe cilantro, uh, and I think that's it. You want to stop there, uh, but you can throw whatever you want in it. Yeah. Yeah. Is it a Casio watch? Yes, it is a Casio watch. I used to have an Apple watch. Uh, and then I discovered that I was pretty much just using the cast. This camera is going to keep turning off, by the way. There's nothing I can do about it. Uh, I apologize in advance. Uh, yeah, I used to have an Apple Watch, and then I traded it in for this Casio watch uh, because I realized that the only thing I was using my Apple Watch for was to tell time. So if I was just going to uh, tell time with it, then I might as well just have a cheaper one that I'm not afraid of breaking. But now I kind of want a Fitbit, so here we go. All right, so those are our carrots. Uh, we're going to add these very, very late. These are going to be part of our garnish, essentially. So those are our carrots. Yeah. Cool. Uh, next up, this is some bean sprouts. So we're going to wash and just wash and essentially pretty much just rinse these bean sprouts off. Um, if you want, I guess you could technically skip the wash. Uh, I like to wash my produce because I think that produce is really, really dirty. So. Uh, so just like any time that we're washing produce, really any time that you're rinsing anything that's going into a wok fry, uh, we want to put it into a strainer first off and then give it a really good shake. We're going to do this with a lot of different things uh, when we're cooking in woks uh, because it's very, very important when these vegetables, they go into the wok, uh, that they need to have as little water as we can possibly achieve uh, because the more water that's involved in the things that go into our wok, uh, the harder time we're going to have keeping that wok hot. And uh, as you'll come to learn any time that we're working in a wok, uh, the main thing that we're trying to do pretty much the entire time that we're cooking in a wok uh, is keep the wok hot because the wok, uh, anytime that we're cooking in a wok, especially on a home range, uh, the biggest problem that we're going to have pretty much the whole time is keeping that wok very, very hot because your home range doesn't get as hot as most restaurant burners, uh, meaning that that wok is going to be constantly losing heat uh, because it's cooking at a lower heat. So uh, The big main thing that we want to do uh, anytime that we're working with veggies like this then uh, is when we... Uh, shake it off, I'm trying to shake out all of this water. So if you're really committed, uh, you could even put it into a salad spinner, or you could even put it on some paper towels and that might work even better. Uh, this, by the way, if you're not familiar, so bean sprouts, uh, at the top of the bean sprout, so if you look really closely, uh, there's this sprout here, uh, and at the top of that sprout uh, is a little bean. It looks like this. This is one of them. Looks like they were hanging around. Uh, that's a mung bean, so it's not the end of the world. Uh, don't freak out if you see those bean sprouts or mung beans hanging around in your bean sprouts. Uh, it's just the mung bean. Uh, usually, uh, most grocery stores, they'll pick them off. Uh, this ones that I got today are from Chinatown, and it looks like they did a real crappy job of picking those beans off. So. 
Here we are. Yeah. Uh, you, I should invest in a salad spinner. I actually do have a salad spinner, but I only use it for salads. <laughs> uh, just like most of the things in my kitchen, uh, I don't like to use things if I have to clean them, so, uh, so, which is maybe not the best logic. Um, but uh, pretty much the only thing, the only thing that I'll voluntarily use is, is this knife uh, and this cutting board. <laughs> Other than that, if I can get away with not using it, get away with not cleaning it, and essentially, uh, I'll probably do it. So. Uh, the real main the main reason that I use that that strainer is because it's a lot easier to clean. Uh, I can just rinse it off. Uh, whereas the salad spinner has three parts: it has the top, uh, and then it has the bowl, uh, and then it has the uh, uh, the spinner inside, which is really annoying to clean. So I usually just avoid it if I possibly can. Yeah, and I'm definitely the same way with a food processor. I fucking hate cleaning food processors because uh, they're so sharp uh, and you have to be really, really careful when you're cleaning your food processor because if you're not careful, you're gonna slice your finger open on that thing. Uh, so I hate cleaning that food processor. <laughs> All right, so this is our tofu today. Just like with the vegetables, uh, I'm uh, banging out as much of this water as possible. Remember that tofu is bound with water. Uh, so just like with those vegetables, it's gonna contain quite a bit of liquid. Uh, so we want to give it a really, really good shake and make sure that we get all, as much of that water out as possible. Right. Uh, what exactly is tamarind? Yeah, it's, so it's a, when, when we find it in the grocery store, it's probably a paste. It should come out in a block. Um, sometimes you'll see it as like a soup base. Uh, sometimes you'll even see it if you're in like a Mexican grocery store, you'll see it coated in candy. Uh, so um, Sour Patch Kids, uh, like those little gummy bears, uh, you'll oftentimes you'll see them. I especially see them in Hawaii a lot uh, with a coating of tamarind and it's essentially like a, like a, and in that scenario, it's like a little bit of like a sour uh, candy flavor. Uh, in, in Thai cooking, it's just a really, really common spice that comes up a lot. I believe coming from, I think it comes from a tree. Somebody can correct me on that. I believe it comes from a tree. Somebody correct me. I'm not not positive about that one. Uh, but yeah, it comes up in a lot of like uh, a lot of Thai cooking. You'll see it on a lot of Mexican cooking. Uh, I definitely see it in a lot of like Mexican soups. Um, uh, but the main thing that I know it from uh, is in Pad Thai, and that's essentially what we're doing today. Cool. So uh, next up, so this is our Thai noodles. This is our pad Thai noodles, I think. Hopefully this is not the wrong noodles. Yeah, it's not the wrong noodles. Uh, so if, you're, uh, if you've ever made pad Thai, you absolutely have to have these fresh noodles. Uh, I just happen to get my hands on them. Ooh, these are not cut. I have to chop these myself. Uh, so <laughs> uh, if, you, if you're making pad Thai and you don't have fresh thai no pad Thai noodles, uh, you can absolutely use freeze-dried th uh, Thai noodles, which are uh, gonna work just fine. Uh, if you can get your hands on this fresh stuff, I highly recommend doing so uh, because it's uh, a little bit more like uh, tender and probably like better than most of the noodles that you'll come across. And so I uh, always highly recommend using fresh noodles anytime that you can get your hands on them. Uh, that is, of course, going to be difficult to do for a lot of folks. So if you can't get your hands on it, it's not the end of the world. Uh, but I highly recommend using this stuff. Also, I was not aware that this was not cut already, so that's fun. Trying to decide how I want to cut this. Okay, I'm gonna cut it this way. All right, let's cut us some noodles. fun. Uh, I've actually never come across uh, whole sheets of chow fun. I wasn't paying attention in the grocery store and here we are. Uh, but essentially what this is is just a whole sheet of chow fun. It's uncut uh, so it's just a big giant sheet. Um, and generally if you're paying attention when you're in the, the especially in Chinese grocery stores uh, especially if you find them like fresh like this uh, you will see a bunch of different types of chow fun. Uh, mostly those are separated by or designated by um, these noodles are cut, so what we're dealing with today is completely uncut chow fun, which is interesting and fun. Um, 
but gen generally when we're talking about what is essentially what is more colloquially referred to as chow fun uh, is referring to wide cut noodles um, and you'll, you'll generally see that with a green label and it will probably say something like chow fun on it like on the label uh, sometimes you will see the words pad thai noodles uh, hanging around like uh, hanging around next to that chow fun uh, that's referring to thinner cut noodles, which is essentially what we just did, is just ch cut this really, really thin. Uh, oftentimes you'll also see other things like vermicelli, the words vermicelli thrown around. Uh, I've found that the word vermicelli is used uh, interchangeably for a lot of things, uh, mainly especially things that are not actually vermicelli. So be careful when you see the words vermicelli uh, thrown around because it might not actually be vermicelli. So what I'm doing right now, so this is especially important, uh, anytime that we're working with fresh noodles like this, uh, so I want to make sure that I have the opportunity while I can do this uh, to pull these noodles apart. So you'll notice that they're packed together in these really, really uh, tightly coiled packages. Uh, and you'll also notice as, as I do this that my hands are covered in oil. Uh, that's because these noodles are also packed in oil. So the more that I work with it, the more that this oil is starting to come off. Um, so very, very important when we're working with fresh chow fun noodles like this uh, is that we want to make sure that we pull these noodles apart, otherwise they may or may not come apart in the wok fry. So if you have a uh, really, really fresh chow fun like we're working with today, it will probably come apart, um, but it's kind of a gamble because it might not work. So uh, if you want to be careful and you want to make sure that you don't end up with a big old chunk of chow fun in your, in your wok fry, uh, do yourself a favor, spend an extra two, three minutes and pull these noodles apart. Wash my fingers, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, we could take a look here. This is the cutting tea bowl that I've been dropping these into. Uh, essentially, what I've been doing is just basically pulling these noodles apart uh, until we have these nice long strands. Uh, and making sure that we don't have any larger clumps like this. We don't want this stuff to clump up. So again, if you can't find the fresh stuff, you can absolutely buy the stuff freeze-dried and it's going to work just fine. It will probably be more or less the same. Uh, the freeze-dried stuff, it's generally like a little bit more um, chewy uh, and not quite as like uh, soft and like really, really delicate in the way that fresh chow fun noodles are. Um, that's not the end of the world, So, but I do recommend if you can get your hands on the fresh stuff, it's highly worth it. Uh, what's tricky about fresh chow fun is that it is very, very 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 perishable so it like it goes stale within like i would say it would go stale within like uh, maybe a day so if you're really lucky uh, you might be able to get it to stay for a, maybe a day and a half after after two days though uh, when you come up on two days with chow fun it's probably going to start turning stale uh, and then once that chow fun turns stale uh, you're not going to be able to get these noodles pulled apart like we just did. Uh, it will essentially start binding together. Uh, and then when we go and try and pull them apart, uh, what's going to happen is it's basically going to just start crumbling in your hands because it's going to turn back into uh, what's basically rice. It's going to turn back into rice. Uh, so uh, if you're using the fresh stuff, make sure that it's very fresh, as in like you literally have to go to the grocery store. I picked this up earlier this afternoon. Uh, you have to get the fresh stuff the day of. So when you're starting to cook it, you have to get it the day of. Uh, don't try and buy. The Fart Opera. That's a great username. Uh, what are we cooking today? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so today we're doing a pad thai with tofu. Uh, I believe the original recipe uses... Uh, I think it uses chicken. I actually don't remember anymore. Uh, a pad thai, if you're not familiar, it's a, a Thai noodle dish that relies very heavily on the use of tamarind paste, which is what this is. Uh, so actually, that also brings me to my next point. Uh, what we're using today, so this is what could be tamarind paste. Uh, what we're using today is because I can't find tamarind paste lately. Uh, it's pad thai sauce. So if we're wondering what pad thai sauce is, I am also wondering what pad thai sauce is. Uh, when I first saw it, I was very, very curious uh, and also very, very skeptical. Uh, what it essentially is, is tamarind paste uh, with a couple of other things added. So usually uh, when I come across pad thai sauce, it's tamarind paste plus uh, probably uh, garlic, sugar, uh, usually a little bit of ginger. Uh, there's usually some, some amount of shallot in it. 
uh, and maybe a little bit of fish sauce. So uh, what I like to do when I use tamarind, or what I like to do when I'm using pad thai sauce is adjust it as best I can. Uh, and whenever possible, I like to just use my own tamarind paste so I don't have to deal with uh, working around what are the, the things that are already in here. Uh, but so that was four tablespoons of uh, tamarind or pad thai sauce. Uh, next, this is another five tablespoons of fish sauce. Uh, and we actually don't have any lime. I ran out of lime. I think we could sub for that. Uh, not really. So I'm going to give this a quick stir, stir. Also, this is looking a little tight, so I'm going to give this a little bit of water uh, to loosen things up. Oh, you know what I forgot to do. Uh, some green onions. Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Part offer is also a kit. It's a really good username. Uh, I totally got sidetracked. Today we're doing a ta uh, tamarind noodle dish uh, called Pad Thai. Uh, if you're here in the States, it's probably a Thai dish that you'll come across uh, in a lot of takeout, Thai takeout. Uh, probably here in the States, uh, maybe the most uh, commonly found Thai dish, or Thai noodle takeout at least. Uh, and it's just like a really, really good, like classic American Thai dish. Um, so, which is why I also say, if you're here in the States at least, uh, I would be really surprised if you're not familiar with Pad Thai so popular. Uh, what we're doing today, is, that came out over on my YouTube channel a few months back. I want to say like close to a year ago now. Uh, so if you're looking for that stuff, that all lives over on my YouTube channel, which is at youtube.com slash cook. Lots of fun stuff going on over there, uh, including all of the recipes. Those are out every Friday. Uh, so last Friday, we came out with a Thai dish called larb, uh, which is essentially a let Thai lettuce wrap. Uh, this Friday coming up, is gonna be, uh, we're doing a Vietnamese vermicelli noodles. So we're gonna do that. Uh, uh, it's gonna be really, really tasty. So, uh, so if you're interested in stuff like that, definitely make your way over to the YouTube channel. Uh, check out what's going on over there. Uh, we got new recipes out every Friday, uh, and then we're gonna free. I think we've been doing Tuesdays now. Uh, cooking through those live every Tuesday. You're late, oh people, you're late. Yeah, no worries. Uh, nobody's there, nobody's ever that late on the stream unless you miss it entirely. Actually, there's replays too, so it's not a big deal if you're late. Yeah, the chunks are tasty. Yeah, cool. Uh, so that's our green onions. So you'll notice what I did is I just chopped this. Someone asked this on a recipe recently. Uh, is that I just sliced these up in two separate halves? So uh, on my left, yeah, on my left. Uh, is the whites of my green onions. On the right are the greens of my green onions. And the reason that we're chopping these separately uh, is because we're gonna treat them separately in our cook. So uh, these greens, they're a little bit more, a little bit thicker and a little bit more durable, uh, which means that they can withstand a little bit more aggressive wok heat. Uh, whereas, hold on, my burner's not lighting up. Uh, those greens, they're a little bit more leafy, uh, uh, which makes them have a little bit more are, have a little bit more of a delicate quality to it. So what we don't want to do is to throw these greens uh, of our green onions straight into our wok fry because they'll basically wilt. So it would be the equivalent of like uh, throwing a piece of lettuce or like spinach or bok choy, uh, any kind of leafy green uh, into our wok. Uh, and essentially what's going to happen when you use a leafy green in a wok fry uh, is it basically wilts and then it more or less will just disappear, which is not great. Um, so in order to protect the like really, really delicate integrity of these green onions, uh, the greens of our green onions, excuse me, uh, we're going to use them as a garnish. So that means that they're simply going to be treated raw and they're going to go right on top. Yeah. So uh, what we're going to do right now, so I'm heating up over on my stove, my wok is getting going. And what we're going to do is bloom out our aromatic elements. So that's uh, my garlic here, then my ginger, uh, the whites of my green onions, and then my Thai chilies. So what we're going to do uh, is throw these into our wok fry uh, pretty briefly for about maybe 30, 45 seconds. No more than that. Uh, and then we're going to pull them out and then we're going to add them to our sauce base. So that tamarind and fish sauce that we just finished mixing. Uh, we're going to throw all of these things, we're going to bloom them out uh, and then we're going to throw them into that sauce and then toss it together. And that's going to give us this really, really fragrant and aromatic sauce element. Uh, and then when we go and start cooking so we can do our tofu first, 
uh, and then toss that in a little bit of that sauce. Uh, then we're gonna add our vegetables and toss in a little bit of that sauce and it's gonna create these nice layers of flavor uh, with nice independent qualities to it. So uh, that we're gonna build out basically starting with all of these aromatics. All right. All right, let's get going. So I'm starting off, this is in my wok that's a, a lighter than usual amount of peanut oil. So I would say that's maybe two tablespoons or so. Uh, we're going a little bit easy on that oil today right now uh, because what we want to make sure is that we don't add too much oil to our aromatics because they're also going to go into our sauce. And if there's too much oil involved in our aromatics, uh, once that oil gets into the sauce base, it's going to separate. Um, we're going to have a layer of oil set, sitting on top of our sauce, which is not what we're after. Uh, we really want to want that stuff to combine properly. So in order to make sure that it does combine, uh, we don't want to add too much oil here. So usually I would say four to five tablespoons of oil. Uh, today we're going with about two, maybe two tablespoons of oil. So I'm starting off, that's my garlic, ginger, and the whites of my green onions. Uh, and then I'm giving that a quick toss. Uh, and we're using our nose at this point, we're paying attention to how it smells when this becomes fragrant. Uh, that's when we know we're in a good place. So you believe that's about 10, 15 seconds for me, but nose at that point. Uh, next up is my Thai chilies. Uh, and as always, anytime that you're working with Thai chilies, before they go into the wok, you want to make sure that your windows are open. Uh, because Thai chilies, they have a lot of seeds in them, so once they get into that hot oil, they're going to start releasing a lot of that capsaicin. Uh, it's going to be pretty caustic. That stuff will make you cough pretty quickly. Uh, so, since we're intentionally releasing that ca uh, capsaicin, uh, make sure those windows are open. You're going to have a, or else you're going to have a real bad coughing fit. Not super fun. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out these aromatics and what we're gonna do is add them to our sauce. And I have the right camera, there we go. So I'm adding this, these aromatics back to my sauce here. All right, we're gonna give this a quick toss. Um, what that's essentially going to do is infuse that sauce with a lot of these aromatic qualities. Uh, and then we can use this sauce uh, as we start layering in our cooking with the veggies and the tofu and the green sprouts, all of those things. Uh, they're going to get a spoonful or so of this sauce uh, and that's going to give us this nice depth of flavor. The stove is not working. That's annoying. So let's head back over to the stove. I'm gonna get my wok heated up one more time and then we can start moving on. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, hello to everyone just tuning in. My name is Wesley. This is Wu Can Cook. We're gonna introduce myself really quickly while this wok is heating up again. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, we're here every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday. Actually, just Tuesdays and Thursdays of late uh, for the next couple of weeks. Uh, every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, most days, though. Uh, and new recipes out over on my YouTube channel every Friday. So if you're looking for how to cook the things that we're cooking, uh, definitely hop over to the YouTube channel because there's lots of fun recipe videos uh, that are a little bit easier to follow, especially if you're trying to recreate this stuff uh, because you can bookmark it and it kind of goes through it a little bit slower and kind of work through some of those things. So if you're interested in stuff like that, definitely make your way over to the YouTube channel and check out what's going on over there. Uh, we got new stuff out every Friday. Uh, and we're working our way up to 5,000 subs by the end of the month. So if you want to help us hit your subscriber goal, please hop over and subscribe. Lots of cool stuff. All right, so we're ready to start doing our full-blown wok cook. So that is a good solid four tablespoons of peanut oil going into our wok fry. Uh, finally, followed by my tofu. Uh, 
Uh, and any time that works, trying to sear tofu like we are trying to do today. Uh, so what I'm working with, this is some firm tofu. Uh, and any time that I'm working with firm tofu, what I like to do is give it a good solid sear. So uh, tofu, lots of people like ask how to get like tasty tofu or how to create like tasty vegetarian options like what we're doing today. Uh, the, my, my personal favorite way of treating firm tofu uh, is to treat it, don't try and treat it like chicken. <coughs> or don't try and cheat, treat it like meat in general. Uh, because it doesn't have the same qualities as meat, so you're going to end up disappointed. Uh, so what I like to do uh, is throw it into that wok fry and then give it a good sear, kind of similar to how you, I guess technically how you would sear a steak. Uh, and so what we're going to try and do is create some crispy tofu, uh, and that's going to give us this nice bit uh, bite to our tofu, rather than like if you've ever had tofu uh, in a lot of like, I guess like in a lot of Chinese cooking. Uh, yeah, I guess in Chinese cooking. Uh, and it comes out like mushy, and you like a crumbly tofu that's like um, technically cooked because tofu can't be uncooked, but uh, also like really mushy, really flavorless, kind of like uh, just like a mushy block of nothing. Uh, that's really unappetizing. So uh, what I like to do when I'm working with firm tofu uh, is give that tofu a really, really good sear uh, so that we have these nice crispy edges to that tofu. Uh, so what we're gonna do uh, so we're going to let that sear for, usually I like to go for two minutes. I'm actually going to give it like a little bit closer to three minutes because uh, tofu seems to take a little bit longer than meat. Uh, and then once it's got, uh, got this nice crispy exterior to it, uh, we're going to give it a toss in some of our sauce and that's going to give it a little bit of flavor. Uh, and then what we're going to do is use a technique in a lot of wok cooking that you'll see in home cooking, uh, which is essentially a process called batch cooking where we're going to remove stuff uh, and then cook our next element. So we're going to pull our tofu out uh, and then cook our veggies uh, in the same fashion with that sauce uh, and then add that tofu back at the very very end uh, and that's going to give us this nice uh, like uh, crispy wok fried like flash cooked quality uh, that's essentially done what we're trying to do is keep that wok temperature very very hot while we cook uh, because if that wok starts overfilling so if we just add stuff to the wok on top of itself uh, what we're going to end up with is a pretty underheated wok uh, and that's going to end up how you end up with stir fries that are like very, very porridgey, got kind of like an oatmeal quality to it. Uh, really, really unappetizing. That's not what we're after here. So uh, our main goal, pretty much any time that we're cooking in a wok, uh, but especially in a dish like Pad Thai where there's so many ingredients, uh, to keep that wok as hot as humanly possible. Otherwise, we're going to end up with uh, undercooked uh, everything. We're going to have mushy everything. So. Uh, the, oh, do I, do I use peanut oil in my... Do I always use peanut oil in my cooking? Uh, I use peanut oil pretty much any time that I'm cooking in a wok, uh, lately. Uh, but the main reason that I do that is because I can find it really cheaply. Uh, and it pairs well. So peanut oil uh, has, it pairs really, really well with uh, anything that, you, like most things that go in a wok. So definitely anything that happens in Chinese cuisine. Uh, definitely most of the things that happen in Thai cuisine uh, pairs really well with most things that happen in like Korean cuisine. Uh, definitely most of the things that happen in Vietnamese cuisine, uh, all of these things, if they're, if they're happening in a wok, it's probably going to work really well with peanut oil. Um, you don't have to use peanut oil, uh, but you can also use pretty much anything that is neutral and has a high smoke point, so I often will use... forgot that this is going. Uh, oftentimes I will use, um, I will substitute that peanut oil for things like grapeseed oil works really well. Um, canola oil is a really great option. Uh, canola oil is what we use in the food pop-up uh, because you can buy it really, really cheaply. That's the same stuff they use for deep fryers and stuff. Uh, so you can get canola oil really cheaply. Same with vegetable oil. Uh, sometimes we use vegetable oil in the pop-ups um, because it's, it's cheaper. Uh, peanut oil is a little bit more expensive, uh, but it's, it just so happens because I live here in Chinatown that I can get a pretty good deal on it, so I use peanut oil. Uh, I want to say that vegetable oil is probably the healthiest option, but here we are. Uh, so no, to answer your question, sorry, long-winded way of answering. Uh, no, you don't, you don't always have to use peanut oil. What I do recommend is uh, if you are going to use peanut oil, uh, is that you want to have something else on hand too. So, Because uh, peanut oil is, is, lots of times people will only stock one kind of oil. Uh, so what I usually do is if I'm using like, uh, if I don't have peanut oil, I'll probably just have grapeseed oil. Uh, and that's like a really good for everything kind of oil. Uh, it doesn't taste like anything. It's very, very uh, it's pretty healthy, uh, and you can use it in a wok fry like this, but you can also use it to like make hash browns, or you could use it 
uh, to make scrambled eggs. Actually, I probably use butter for scrambled eggs, but you can use it for um, pretty much everything that you want to cook. You can probably use grapeseed oil. So the same is not actually true for peanut oil. Uh, if you don't want your ingredients to taste like peanut, it's probably not going to work out. Uh, so you can't really make hash browns with peanuts, unless, peanut oil unless you want your hash browns to taste like peanuts. I should probably be a little bit more gentle. Uh, so what I always recommend is if you are going to use peanut oil, uh, have something else. Have, have some canola oil or have some vegetable oil on hand. Uh, so what I usually say uh, is if you're using peanut oil, you should have at least one other high heat, uh, like grapeseed or canola or vegetable oil. Uh, and then you should also have some olive oil on hand for when you want to do uh, most like European cooking. So like Italian cooking, uh, French cooking, lots of those things, they use uh, olive oil. Uh, and that's used because olive oil has a specific quality and taste to it. Um, so the number one thing that we want to avoid when we're cooking in a wok uh, is, is things like olive oil or anything that has a low smoke point. <clears throat> because what will happen if you try and use olive oil uh, is it's going to hit that smoke point really, really quickly because we're cooking on such high heat. Uh, and a couple of things will happen when that smoke point gets hit. Uh, first thing that's going to happen is it's going to start smoking really, really aggressively. Uh, and then you're going to have a house filled with smoke, which is not great. Uh, but the second and probably more problematic thing that's going to happen uh, is it's also going to start burning. So if you've ever tasted burnt oil, uh, it essentially tastes like burnt olives, which is not great. So it has a very specific flavor to it uh, that we don't necessarily want all the time. So uh, do yourself a favor. Uh, make sure that you're not using anything that has a high heat to it or high smoke to it uh, because you're going to end up with um, a real, real smoky uh, and probably like kind of a burnt quality to your stir fries. There we go. Cool. <clears throat> the key to cooking is not fucking fucking it up. Yeah, I guess that's more or less a big catch-all. <laughs> the, the real key to cooking is to not fuck things up. Uh, but I fuck shit up all the time, so... Yeah. Yeah! Cool. I gotta think outside of the box, yeah. Or I probably should just stop being so lazy about doing dishes. Or maybe I should just get a dishwasher. I don't know. So this tofu is nearly there. I'm going to let it go for a little bit longer. I'd like to have it a little bit more browned. Uh, and then we're going to pull that out and we're going to move on to our veggies next. Yeah. Uh, so if you'll notice, you'll see all of this nice dark browning and crisping happening right here. All of that, uh, all of that crisping, all of that nice crispy qualities that we're developing there. Uh, that's what we're going after: is that nice crispy texture to our tofu, uh, and that's going to give us this nice, uh, nice bit of bite to our uh, protein for today. this out. Oops. I meant to do some sauce in there. Backtrack. Before we pull <coughs> before we pull that out, I'm gonna add this is gonna be about two tablespoons of our tamarind sauce. Uh, and then we're gonna give our tofu a toss in that sauce. Uh, and that's gonna be where all of our flavor comes from today. Now we're pulling it out. Uh, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to reheat our wok again. I'm going to let that reheat. Uh, and then we're going to move on to our veggies next. So with the veggies that we have today are bean sprouts, carrots, and those shallots. Uh, we're going to do a same, the same thing. So we're going to do uh, some peanut oil, and then we're going to give that a stir fry. We're going to get everything a little bit uh, past their cooked point. Um, so really, really quickly, we're going to do it really fast. Uh, probably about a minute, maybe maybe two minutes in total, uh, and then we're pretty much just going to be combining from there. So, uh, with ingredient, with each ingredient, what we're going to do is the same thing that we just did, just did with that tofu. Uh, I'm going to give everything about a spoonful or two of that sauce, uh, and then that's going to give this nice layer of 
uh, flavor going on with each ingredient so that uh, that way our, our carrots have flavor, our tofu has flavor, our bean sprouts have flavor, each of the ingredients have some sort of flavor going on. Um, we're not relying on just those noodles to have flavor uh, with like a little bit of protein tucked inside of it. So one more time, that's four tablespoons of peanut oil. We're gonna give this a good long yao. Uh, and then I'm starting off, this is my carrots. Uh, and my shallots going in. So the only thing that I'm holding back right now is my bean sprouts and I'm doing that pretty intentionally uh, because bean sprouts are super delicate. Uh, so what we don't want to do, the reason that I'm holding back those bean sprouts uh, is because bean sprouts are made up of mostly water. Uh, so if you throw bean sprouts in too early uh, with a more durable veggie like a carrot, for example, uh, that's going to end up overcooking and then we're going to have uh, a very, very mushy bean sprout. You might even have it just completely disappear uh, because it's going to start shedding out all of its moisture and all of its liquid, uh, which is not great. That's not what we're after. We're trying to keep those bean sprouts nice and crisp. Uh, so we're going to throw it into the wok fry at the very, very end, uh, within the last like maybe 30 seconds. Uh, and, that, that, and then from there, we're going to uh, toss everything together. And what we're trying to do is keep those bean sprouts nice and crispy. Otherwise, uh, we're going to have some, uh, otherwise we're going to end up with some real mushy bean sprouts, which is not great. Cool. Hello to everyone just tuning in. My name is Wesley. This is Wu Can Cook. I'll introduce myself one more time before we finish up. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, we're here every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 6.30 PST uh, with new recipes out on my YouTube channel every Friday. So if you haven't checked out the YouTube channel yet, uh, there's lots of fun stuff coming up every Friday. So uh, last Friday, we came out with a Thai uh, lettuce wrap called Larb Guy, or actually that was Larb Mu because we used pork. Uh, Friday before that, we did uh, a Chinese uh, rice roll called a Sithan or a fan tuan, or a si fan tuan, however you want to call it. Uh, let's see, this Friday coming up is going to be a vermicelli rice noodle uh, that comes from Vietnamese um, cuisine. Um, we're going to do that with some lemongrass chicken. So lots of stuff coming up. Uh, if you haven't yet, definitely make your way over to the YouTube channel. Check out what's going on over there. Uh, lots of fun new recipes coming up every Friday. Uh, and if you have never tuned into one of these live streams, uh, what we've been doing is pretty much any time that you see me cooking on one of these things, I'm um, probably cooking through a recipe that already exists over on the YouTube channel. So uh, we're working our way up to 5,000 subs by the end of the month. So if you want to help us hit our subscriber goal, uh, please hop over and subscribe. Lots of fun stuff coming up. All right, so just like with our tofu, I'm adding that's about two tablespoons of sauce here. Uh, and then I'm going to give this a quick toss. Uh, followed finally by my bean sprouts, maybe too much bean sprouts. That might be a little bit. Uh, and then once again, another spoonful of our sauce here. Uh, and then finally, now that everything is cooked and flash cooked in that wok, uh, we're going to add our tofu back to the wok, uh, followed finally by our noodles. Um, very important, just like we do with any time that we're working with uh, fresh chow fun or really any time that we're working with rice noodles in general. Uh, we're not going to dump all of this in at once. What we're doing is uh, adding it about a handful at a time, uh, and then I'm going to give it a really gentle turn. Uh, so the reason that we don't want to just dump all of this chow fun into the wok uh, is because has, chow fun has this quality about it uh, where this stuff loves to clump up together. Um, it loves to stick to itself. That's why this stuff is packaged in oil so much. Um, it's because it has this tendency where uh, any chance that it gets, it's going to want to try and stick together uh, and basically turn back into rice, which is not what we're after. Uh, so I'm adding it a little bit at a time. Uh, and then giving it a toss. Uh, the other thing that you'll notice that I'm doing is I'm also being very, very gentle with my tossing now. Uh, so I'm not doing any more aggressive uh, flipping, doing anything. Um, we're not like hitting the wok too hard anymore. Uh, what we're essentially doing is just adding the noodles and then giving it a really, really, really gentle turn. Uh, and what we're trying to do here 
uh, is make sure that we don't break up any of these large clumps of noodle. Or, excuse me, making sure that we don't break up any of these large uh, long strands of noodle because um, we've done a lot of work uh, to make sure that we don't break them apart. This one is not coming apart. So we've done all of this work to make sure that the noodles stay nice, uh, long, and luxurious. So make sure that when we're tossing here, uh, don't do any more aggressive tossing or else you're going to break these noodles into chunks. Uh, and then you're going to, if you've ever had a pad thai that has like uh, all of these like fractured bits and pieces of chow fun, uh, that's what happens when you toss the wok too aggressively. Now that all of our noodles are in, we're going to very gently add a little bit more sauce here. I'm saying I'll probably not need all of our sauce today. Let's take a look. And once again, we're tossing very, very gently. Uh, and what we're trying to do is make sure that we don't break up or cut in half any of these noodles because they're very, very delicate. So uh, eventually that is also ultimately going to happen eventually. Uh, but we're doing our very, very best to protect the integrity of those noodles uh, so that we don't end up with broken noodles. Not fun. So the last thing that we want to do anytime that we're cooking in a carbon steel wok like this one uh, is give it a nice rinse. Uh, while the wok is hot, it's very useful to clean that wok uh, while it's hot because otherwise uh, stuff will have a tendency to stick to it, which is not super fun. Uh, and then what's going to happen is you're going to sit down and you're going to want to eat the things that are in front of you uh, because stuff is in front of you and you want to eat it already. Uh, but do yourself a favor, give that wok a nice cleaning before you sit down to eat. Uh, because it's a lot easier to clean while this thing is hot. Once it cools down, you're going to have a lot more trouble cleaning this thing. Um, so uh, what I'm doing is I'm reheating. I'm keeping this thing on some heat, and then we're going to give it a nice... Um, every, I say every like two, maybe the third or fourth cook time, I'll usually add a little bit of oil and give it a little bit of a coating of oil. Uh, and that's essentially going to keep things from starting to oxidize as well. That's pretty much going to do it. All right. I did forget. I forgot the eggs. Excuse me while I reheat a wok. I forgot to add the eggs to our pad thai. Oh, I forgot something. Even if I I never said that I don't fuck up. <laughs> Here we are. Cool. 
So what we're doing right now, because I forgot to do it, uh, I'm gonna reheat the wok right now. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is add our noodles back to that wok and then we're going to give it a nice toss uh, with about two, maybe three eggs worth. Uh, and then what essentially we're trying to do is uh, we're going to try and coat our chow fun in eggs. So this is probably a quality uh, that you'll recognize from um, most Thai noodles that you've ever come across. Uh, is what we're essentially going to do uh, is coat that chow, chow fun in some scrambled eggs. So uh, what I like to refer to it is, is literally the exact opposite of how you would come across a fried rice. Uh, whereas in fried rice and most times that you see scrambled eggs in Chinese cooking, uh, what we're trying to do is create these nice big curds of egg, um, which is like uh, essentially trying to create these big nice curds of egg. So it's essentially scrambled eggs going on in your rice. Uh, with Thai noodles, what we're trying to do is the exact opposite. But what we're looking for is a nice coating of egg uh, coated throughout our noodles. So I'm using some egg that's actually from our food pop-up, so it's actually in a squeeze bottle because we did it in an immersion blender. Um, but you don't have to have a squeeze bottle. You can absolutely just uh, whisk that stuff up uh, in the bowl. I can't believe I forgot the eggs. My bad, guys. Cool, so we're gonna give that maybe about 30, 45 seconds to let it set, and then we're gonna move on uh, and eat. Oh, cool, yeah, now you know what's wrong with your chow and I'm glad that uh, it was somewhat educational. Uh, and I'm glad that all of the mistakes that I've made with chow fun are informative to someone. All right. One more time, we're gonna clean off our water here. And now we're done cooking. How embarrassing. Forgot to add the eggs. All right. So just like when we're cooking, I'm doing the same thing when I'm serving as well. Uh, we're doing our very, very best to protect the integrity of these nice long strands of chow fun that we just uh, spent all of that time protecting. Uh, so I'm not going to go in and just aggressively dive in with these tongs. I'm being very gentle and handling with care because as always, uh, that chow fun, just like it was before, is super, super delicate. So don't go diving in too hard uh, or you're going to break up that chow fun and you're going to have big crumbly bits of chow fun, which is not what we're after. When's your order ready? Yeah, come and get it. also a great username. There's so many dumb usernames on Reddit. Cool. Okay, I think that's it everyone. Let me know if you have any questions. Once again, my name is Wesley. This is Wu Can Cook. Uh, we're here every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 6.30 PST with new recipes out on my YouTube channel every Friday. I just keep forgetting to taste these things. Oh yeah, that's one of my favorite ways to use tofu in a pad thai. So the tofu is nice, has a nice crispy exterior to it. It's still nice and tender inside, uh, which is 
hard to do with firm tofu because firm tofu, if you're not careful, uh, it just gets really, really dense and chewy inside if you if you sear it too aggressively. Uh, so, but it has this nice like crispy quality on the exterior, but it's still nice and tender on the interior. Uh, and then what we're having is that nice, uh, that tamarind paste kind of like permeates throughout the dish. Uh, so if you've ever had noodle dishes, not just true with pad thai, it's actually true with a lot of noodle dishes, uh, where like maybe the noodles are really, really tasty, or maybe the chicken is really, really tasty, uh, but everything else is pretty much just bland. Uh, and you kind of like have to assemble when you go in and try and eat it. You have to assemble your bites very carefully. So you have to have like a little bit of chicken with a little bit of noodles. Uh, otherwise you don't, nothing really like, those noodles don't really taste like anything. Uh, what we just did, it kind of solves that problem uh, where we have uh, these big layers of flavor that have kind of like seasoned across the whole dish. Uh, whereas otherwise, if you just try and like added everything at the very, very end, uh, what you'll probably end up with is just one thing kind of tasting like something. Uh, and then the rest of it is just sort of like uh, the filler that goes along with it. So that's one of my favorite ways of approaching like a sauce base like what we just did uh, is to make sure that everything has this nice uh, quality of flavor to it that co covers across the entire dish. So cool. How much, how much would I charge for that? Uh, ooh, I don't know. Uh, we charge 13 for the fried rices, but uh, also if you're not here in the Bay Area, I've been told that 13 for a bowl of rice is like very, very high. Uh, but here in the Bay Area, that's a pretty common one. I think actually we were doing uh, $12 for the rice, uh, 13 for the rice burritos, so. Uh, but if, yeah, if you're here in the Bay Area, come find us. We're at the Hayward Farmer's Market uh, next Saturday. We're gonna do, um, we're doing pretty much all of the fried rices that have come out on the YouTube channel. Uh, plus a couple of uh, different uh, burritos that uh, were basically uh, putting the fried rice inside of a, a burrito tortilla with a, a pickled a pickled shallot and a, a cilantro crema. Uh, and it's honestly, it's like one of the best fusion dishes that I have ever created. And uh, I actually, we did a recipe video uh, that's coming out pretty soon for that burrito. Yeah, cool. Okay, uh, thanks everyone. Once again, my name is Wesley. This is Wu Can Cook. Uh, if this is your first time tuning in, we're here every Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday at 6.30 PST. Uh, new recipes out on my YouTube channel every Friday. So uh, this Friday coming up, in, uh, that's literally tomorrow. Uh, we're doing a lemongrass chicken vermicelli noodle dish uh, that comes from Vietnamese cuisine. Uh, probably one of like the most common noodle dishes that you'll come across in Vietnamese food, uh, at least in like Vietnamese takeout. Uh, and we're gonna do that tomorrow. Uh, that's coming up tomorrow and it means that we're gonna be cooking through it next, th uh, next Tuesday uh, coming up next week. Um, we're gonna cook through that live. So uh, if you're interested in stuff like that, definitely make your way over to the YouTube channel. Uh, check out what's going on over there. That vermicelli noodle dish, uh, it's part of a larger series that we've been doing where we've been taking a, or paying homage to uh, a lot of the dishes that come from places, uh, restaurants that are here in the Oakland, San Francisco Bay Area. So uh, if you're interested in stuff like that, definitely hop over to the YouTube. Uh, check out what's going on. We have, uh, we're working our way up to 5,000 subs by the end of the month. So if you want to get our subscriber goal, uh, please hop over and give it a subscribe. Cool. All right. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye.
Ha 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 ha. 